Hey everybody, welcome back to another Deep Dive episode. I'm here today with Girl Gone Crypto, Leah Thompson. I'm really excited to have her. She is our influencer of the month, our very first one for the month of May, and she's joining me today to do a deep dive on best practices for storing your public key, your private key, your seed phrase. What are all of these different things that people talk about? She's gonna break it down for you and she's gonna give you some best tips and pointers for storing all of these things safely so that they don't get out there, you don't lose them uh, because you're, you're, all your crypto is attached to it. So you definitely wanna make sure that they're stored in a good place and stored securely. So welcome Leah, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me as a guest here on the channel. I'm super honored to be the first like influencer of the month. This is going to be really fun. I'm really excited for us to just hang out and chat about all these different things. I kind of feel like we could chat for a long time. We were like talking about hiking for 20 minutes before this, which is great. So, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But we will try to stay focused in this video. Um, so why don't why don't you start off by just telling people like what is the difference? What's a public key? What's a private key? What's a seed phrase? What's the difference between mm. all of those different terms? Perfect. Yeah. So your public key, I kind of think of as like the mailbox to your house, right? Like you can give that address out to people. You give it to the mailman. You know, you might give it to Amazon. They're going to ship you some things. It's not something that you're maybe so worried about protecting, right? Where your, um, your private key is going to be kind of like inside your house. Like that's like your space. That's your, um, kind of domain to protect, if you will, right? Uh, where the key is what lets you get into the house where the, um, the private key is sorry if I'm like stumbling on my words a little bit, but um, that's generally how I think about it. like public address is something that you can give to someone um, and your private you know, address is something that's going to be a little bit more like personal or kind of shielded behind the door. <laughs> Your private key is almost like it's like if you have an alarm system in your house, when you go in and you have to like type in the code to shut off the alarm so the alarm doesn't go off. It's more like that, right? Yeah, no, that's perfect. I love it. <laughs> okay, awesome. And then so then there's something else called a seed phrase. And w what's that all about? Yeah, so this is, I think, an area that at least people that are kind of newer to crypto and are figuring out how to kind of secure their funds, maybe you can get a little bit confused on, right? Because you have this thing often, I know we're going to talk, um, you know, in a later video about hardware wallets, um, but it's like, well, if I lose that, do I lose my money? How does this work? And it's no, the seed phrase Basically, what I want anyone watching this to take away from it is like that is your most precious possession. Literally, that is that is the key to your house, like fully and truly like that is what allows you to keep your funds safe. And that is the only way that someone could get access to your funds. And so you lose your hardware wallet, something happens, your funds are still on the blockchain. You know, it's not dependent on some USB stick looking thing, right? Um, your seed phrase is what allows you to really access your funds anywhere in the world if you need to, as long as you basically have an internet connection. Got it. So then when we think about this in the context of, let's say, buying crypto, when would when would I use my public key? When would I use my private key? When would I use my seed phrase? Um, and then are these like specific to different platforms like Coinbase, MetaMask, other things, or do all the platforms use all three? Mm, that's a good question. Okay, so let's say that I um, am going to pay you back for lunch because we've been out to lunch after hiking, let's say, <laughs> right? And so um, you would give me your public key so that I know where to send the money to. Kind of coming back to that mailbox analogy, like, you know, it might sound old school, but like, where would I mail the check, right? Like, where do I send the money, right? And so that's something that, um, again, whether it's in a public address on Coinbase, on MetaMask, on you know, I don't know, trust wallet, like whatever wallet you use, um, that the funds can be received there. And so you might get a different public address from each of those different platforms. But as long as it is a public address on a viable platform that is that belongs to you, you should be able to receive funds directly to that address. Um, where a private key is something that like maybe you are going to send funds. And so to really prove that it's you. So on, on this side of the equation where I'm, you know, maybe paying you back for lunch, um, I might need to input my private key to really prove it's me to be able to send the funds from my wallet. Um, where a seed phrase is going to be almost like that, like true backup of, um, 
you know, how you kind of restore maybe something. So I'm not every day putting in my seed phrase, which is often 12 to 24 words, you know, randomly generated words, which is would be quite intense to put in every single time, you know, you needed to do a transaction. But if something happened to, let's say my hardware wallet and I lost it and I, you know, let's say I had a ledger, um, I would just order another ledger, put that seed phrase in to restore my account. And so it's something that you're not going to be utilizing nearly as often, but again, is like the most important thing Thing to really keep sacred because it is what allows you to get access to your accounts if you ever needed to reset something. Got it. Got it. So then if I have multiple different wallets, like say I have a Coinbase wallet, I have a MetaMask wallet, I have a Ledger wallet, do I have a new set of public private keys and seed phrases for each wallet? Or do I sort of have like the same uh, public and private keys and seed phrase for all the wallets across the board? So you will have a different one, right? And so like, let's say that I have some Bitcoin on Coinbase. And so that, um, and we can get into the conversation of custodial versus non-custodial if you want, but that is living on Coinbase, right? And so then when I send it to my ledger, um, that's going to be a different address that I get from my ledger. If I ever needed to restore my ledger, that would be, you know, the seed phrase for that account. Um, I'd have different public private keys. So basically, even though you can kind of move things around as you wish, um, you are going to have like kind of, it's almost like a different account for each uh, different platform or tool that you're using. Got it. And so lots of things to keep track of here, especially as people are, you know, diving into it, like trying to buy different cryptocurrencies and not all of them uh, can be held in the same place or they're just trying to play around and test out different ones. What's your best recommendation for keeping track of all of this? And I know like, you know, some people like to just like, write it down on a piece of paper if they're more old school or maybe like put it in their notes folder on their phone. Like what's the best way to store this to make sure that you don't lose it? Because it's really bad. To like once you lose it, then you're kind of SOL, right? Like you really want to make sure you don't lose it. Right. And so this is where, um, you know, I'm so glad we're having this conversation because I think a lot of people, it's that first step of buying crypto, right? And that's really exciting. And then you know, it's that next step of, oh, I got a hardware wallet. And then the next step is like, okay, what am I doing to really keep this safe? And so I'm glad that you mentioned, um, you know, like the kind of varying levels of ways that someone might uh, secure those. And so I'll kind of walk through that. And I truly do think that... Um, the more crypto you hold, the more important it is to use these more, you know, kind of stringent type of backups. Um, because if you, let's say, um, you know, maybe you're just kind of playing around, you buy like $100 of Dogecoin, you probably don't need to like imprint your private keys and like stainless steel at that point. Like, I mean, you can if you want to, but um, generally speaking, I kind of think that as people get a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole of really um, getting into this. And then also the more, like the higher percentage of their overall net worth it is, and like the more it would hurt to lose is kind of the more strict you might want to be with actually looking at securing it. And so, um, you know, at a super, super base level, you know, if you have it in a password protected and encrypted password manager. I think that that um, is a fairly secure way to do things. It's not completely offline. It's not like the most secure ever. But if you're using like I personally um, like to use one password, that's uh, one that it's nice because it syncs between my laptop and my phone and different things like that. And so that can be a really good kind of first step because a lot of these password managers are really inexpensive. Um, I would just say like splurge a little bit and get a, a, you know, a really established one. Like I remember when I first got a password manager, like um, however long ago, so long ago, I was like, oh, I'll just get this free app. And then three years later, they stopped providing support to the app. And I was like, oh, I guess all my passwords are gone. <laughs> and so, um, you know, look, at, I would say like within that, even look at a brand that is pretty well established. Um, so that would be step one. And I'm glad that you mentioned the notes app because I think that's something a lot of people do. They put it in a Word document. They put it in the notes app on their phone. They take a screenshot of it. And these are all terrible, terrible ideas. <laughs> and so like it, it's really like if you think about just protecting your funds, it's so it's really so easy to use an encrypted password manager. It's not that hard and it's going to be much more secure than a screenshot on your phone or just something in a notes app. So that would be my first recommendation. Um, and then 
you know, you can dive into it from there. Um, kind of back to my example I just said about I was using kind of a cheaper password manager and suddenly I couldn't get access to my account because they stopped providing support to it. Um, like, that would really suck if that happened and to the password manager you're using and that's where your seed phrase and private keys are. And so then creating an offline backup is really the next step. And so you talked about writing it down on a sheet of paper. I think that that's a really, you know, great thing to do. There are, um, you know, there's even uh, like tear resistant waterproof paper you can do if you want. You can put it in a fireproof safe bag. Like there's, you know, all these kind of like nerdy things that you can do uh, just to, because if you think about like you accidentally spill your coffee on your backups and you can't read it anymore, that could be a problem. <laughs> so... For sure. Yeah. I think it's almost like if, if you were to think about, you know, would you uh, like how you were saying it's a bad idea to take a screenshot of it or write it in your notes app on your phone. It's like if you think about like your crypto address, your public key, your, your private key, especially is sort of like your bank account number. Like if we're, you know, relating it back to traditional finance, like would you write your bank account number on your notes app and your phone? Probably not, right? So uh, probably don't write your private keys there either. Um, all right, well, thank you so That's much. That's a great analogy, for yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought of it as you were talking and I was like, huh, yeah, I guess like if all your crypto, all your like money, all your wealth is stored in this private key, then mm -hmm. it's basically your bank account. And would you really, you know, take a screenshot of your bank account info and save it to your <laughs> phone or like copy and paste it into your notes app? Like when you think about it that way, it sounds a little silly. So, uh, <laughs> totally. well, thank you so much, Leah, for joining me on this deep dive. Thank you again for working with us this month and being our influencer of the month. Uh, we will have more videos with you coming out, both on our channel as well as on your channel. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you learned something. If you have more questions about public keys, private keys, seed phrases, best practices for storing them, security, things like that, um, definitely tweet us at Unstoppable Web or comment in the video below, and we'll make sure we get those answered for you. Thanks for watching.